for this redistrib redistribution of funds. Um, this kind of shows how to touch that y'all are with the needs of the community. Most of the drainage systems problems goes back all the way to Ike. And this could be shown for the trees and how big they are, where water should be flowing throughout all the bayou systems. Um, let's see. If, if Trinity Bay Water Conservation is unable to meet the needs of our community, I'm going to suggest to the other residents that we make up a mud specifically for drainage issues. That way we can be at the table for applying for funds for federal loans, for Texas Water Development Board funds, and other flood control grants that are available. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, <clears throat> and I appreciate, let me start out by saying I appreciate y'all having this meeting tonight, uh, so uh, some more folks could come that uh, are right. right. They asked, and, 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 and I really appreciate that. Yes, really sir. I appreciate y'all doing that. I uh, appreciate the fact that you have a uh, study for this fiddle top watershed on uh, your agenda this evening. Uh, I think that's a step in the right direction. <clears throat> However, I have some questions, and hopefully they'll be addressed when y'all uh, look at the proposal. Most drainage studies that I've seen, you know, deal with a long-term solution, you know, to the problem. And that's great. You know, we need a long-term solution to get us down the road 20, 30 years from now. Is there going to be a short-term solution addressed in this study as well? Because uh, that's very important to a, a lot of people, uh, particularly a lot of people that live in my neighborhood. Uh, Monday morning, we had about two and a half inches of rain, according to my gauge, and ditches were full in front of the house, water's coming up in the yard, I'm thinking, holy cow, what's going on? A little paranoid, <laughs> obviously. Uh, so I go out to take a ride, and the ditch on the west side of Dugall, that big ditch that I think is Trinity Bay's ditch, even though it's on, a, on you know, next to the road, that also leads down toward the airport, it's full. I mean full. Culverts, you can't even see through the culverts. So I'm thinking, well, it's two inches of rain, you know, what's going on here? So I head out down toward the airport. That ditch is full until you get about halfway down the road and it starts dropping off. You get spindle top, and spindle top's, you know, taking water. It's okay. I'm not an engineer, but that tells me there's a plug somewhere, you know, or the crossings, uh, do those need to be checked uh, and cleaned out. Not a long-term solution, but you know, it's short-term. Uh, are we going to be looking at those kind of things? Are you going down, looking at crossings and bridges and all on spindle top um, to see uh, if possibly you know there's some issues there. I, you know, just concerns that I have, you know, from the short term. I, I, we need a study. We need to look at. I've heard talk about diversion channels and all that kind of stuff, and I know that's probably 10 or 15 years down the road. Uh, I'm not going to be living in that neighborhood 15 years from now. Uh, but a lot of people are, hopefully, hopefully, there will be a lot of people living out there. Uh, so those are the things, you know, right now, I've got a lot of other questions, got a lot of other people here that want to talk, but uh, those are, you know, the things initially on my mind, according to what you've got on your agenda tonight. And uh, I hope we're going to be looking at those. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. And, and to answer your question, son, there's a lot of things that are being thought of and, and trying to be done in, in short-term solutions, along with the long-term. The long-term the only thing can fix this. But there's a lot of short-term things that can be fixed. And we're looking at a lot of that. And, and I appreciate you. And, and are you, I mean, uh, are you yeah. being discussions held with Texas Dodd and oh, yes, County sir. and Jefferson County? I have I'll some have handouts now. down here that uh, on the front desk that was, uh, Gary went to another meeting today. Good. Where we can all get together and fix this. Good, because I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mike. All right. And, uh, Rick Neal? Nice. Nicely. 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 That's me. Uh, you do a nice job. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people are arguing about my. Uh, I just, I, 
I can reiterate what everybody just said, but I want to give you a little status update on the folks in my neighborhood that I know of. And the neighbors and friends are scattered to hotels, friends' homes, uh, families' homes, want to even purchase a trailer to live in, and yes, or some are even staying in their gutted, uh, gutted homes or construction sites, if you will. And Divinity Road is really yeah. It could be any neighborhood. It could be any neighborhood. They are dealing with contractors, FEMA, insurance adjusters, etc., and adjusting to this new lifestyle. Again, anywhere. For these reasons and hundreds more, we must work together as a team to prevent this from ever happening again. This board, the county, and TEXA has to fix the drainage in these areas of, of their responsibilities, and we the voters and taxpayers must hold these entities accountable to do the job they have been entrusted to with, with and not to lackadaisical about it. One of the questions that came up is spindle top. Are you responsible for it from Liberty County to the intercoastal? So you don't own it at intercoastal. You're not responsible for it. You're just responsible to it to 124. Past 124, but not all what? No. It goes into DD6. Okay. And one of the things that I was curious about, I just found out, is that a lady across the street from me, she started, I live on Pavilion Road, the lady across the street from me, at 10.30 p.m., she started getting water into her house. Me, I woke up at 12.30 and it was ankle deep in my house. At 7.30 a.m., we're evacuating and it's waist deep in my driveway. A mile west of me, Richard, Richard Deliver, the De Villier lives, and he had water just start coming into his house at 7 a.m. Spindletop is to the west of him. So where'd all this water come from unless it came right down the LNBA dike and into our part of the uh, neighborhood flooded us and all the current you can see all the debris that floated away from our houses are going west. So something like was brought up, there's a dam somewhere is causing all this water to come in. Yes, so it's not only looking at this board, it's the county, and I'm glad Jimmy's here, needs to address that. I don't know if Texcox involved in our issue on the north side of the Debilly Road. But I know that Texas is probably involved in getting it out across the south side of the Interstate 10. I know what you're talking about. I live just north of it, not far. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I find that curious. It is. How that can how that can happen? Yes, sir. One of the things I asked for when I asked for this special meeting, and you're going to do it, the watershed yes. uh, question, is also an accounting of the five to six million dollars that was moved from the drainage to this water and sewer issue. And I know at one time you went to the Attorney General to find out if that was legal, and obviously it must have been legal. Like was brought up, once you implement this watershed, what's the timeline? Because like you said, 20 years down the road ain't gonna help us the next time. And also I need clarification possibly from the attorney at the last meeting, one of the agenda items came up and a young lady wanted to express her opinion uh, and she was shut down. Is that a true story? Can that happen on uh, each agenda I item? I wasn't there. I know you were not. But that was in public comment and yes sir. We... It was when you were voting on the, on the uh, water rates, to raise the water yes. rates. Yes, to a maximum of two dollars. Right. That's when she was shut down. Okay. That lady, I know you okay. Also, uh, there's been some talk, and the young lady brought it up about the possibility of splitting 
Trinity Bay Conservation District into two entities, one for drainage and one for water and sewer. So we know where our money is going. And y'all can take care of these people who want to develop and all this and that. But we got to know where our money's going and why we're flooding. So I think I answered everybody's questions. So thank you. <laughs> Alexander. Brett. Brent. Brent. 
Hi, I'm, I'm Debbie Thomas. I don't know how to spell it. Po-t-t-t. I don't know how to spell it. P-O-T-I-E-R. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Debbie Thomas. Debbie. I live in Stowe on South McDaniel. Yes, ma'am. I'm I do understand your comments because I too flooded in Harvard. I had the sewer backed up. I do have flood insurance, which they didn't cover everything. We personally ripped out everything, put in you, you shower, you tubs and all. Now again, I flood again. And I got kind of okay, a little excited after Harvard because I seen them working on the canal. Mm -hmm. Well, they lowered the bank and I thought surely, even if we have a steady rain, and I had Mr. Burr came by one day. This is steady rain. I can't even flush my commodes. That's unsanitary. I know about the sewer backup. But then this, the flip to me is, I was the only one in Harvard that flooded down my road. Now, it was supposed to have cleaned that canal out. That Wednesday, we were out of school. We went up to the store, me and my sister, we rode back by, and I told her, I said, I'm in trouble because that canal was already full and it wasn't raining anymore. I walked out of my house in flip-flops, went to Market Basket, came back, never had water. Started raining that night. I, she calls me. I wake up, I look out, and she says, do you have water? Well, <laughs> by that time, the water was coming in. I didn't have time to pick up any of the area rugs I'd put down. But the ironic thing is that canal was supposed to be clean, which was all the way up. In Harvey, I was the only one flooded. This time, everybody on my street flooded except for one house. Even them on, in homes with piers, and they had just had theirs leveled and raised, they got water in. So now we all got water in. And not only did I lose the, the have to gut out the house, I lost two vehicles. So, and they did too. So we have people here who've never flooded before. Out of the 40 something years I moved in, and they were already there. But this time, we all flooded. So something needs to be done with that canal. And that, like I said, it's even on a normal basis. I can leave to go to work at the school in the morning. I can use my commodes in the, in the uh, shower and all. And if I, it's a steady slow rain, I can go home in the afternoons. I can't use my commodes in the shower. Pardon me? Where do you live? On South McDaniel. And that canal was full that Wednesday. I rolled by and I told her, I said, we're in trouble. If it rains anymore tonight, I'm in trouble. And had I not gotten out and went across to their house and got, we went into the, uh, there's a garage and there's a room up. And as you know, Mr. White is, is tall. When he stepped off his porch, well, when I went to go, I was already in water waist deep. He was in water waist deep just stepping off his porch for us to go into the garage. Her freezer was floating. So something has to be done, and it was it, it had just really started raining. It wasn't that long before we had water coming in. I opened up the door trying to get out, and she could, my sister could hear the panic in my voice because the water was rolling in. And I knew that day. I told her, I said, "I'm in trouble tonight if it rains." Thank you, Ms. Thomas. You may not think it, but all this information helps, and I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am, in the back. Yes. Um, I'm not sure if I am the only one from West Big Ridge Road that my main concern in question to you is Spindle Top again. All of Winnie, I feel for them, they get flooded. We on West Big Road sit for a week with right. water lapping under our house. I didn't know if you noticed it. Mayhaw on the east side of 124 drain, but it was 89 days. But while the water still stayed on the stone top stuff. So my question is, why hasn't something did, been done short term to help us out? I would like to know why there is not a culvert that goes under 124 from West Big Ridge to the other side to help that water get out. And like I said, my heart goes out to everyone in this room. But I do have a bitterness about it that when he drains, they get in, they start pulling out nastiness, and we are still sitting five days later. I even seen the gentlemen come out in their cars, and you could see, I was watching them out my window, I'm not sure who it was, but they were checking out the flooding and how the land looked. Five days later, my brand new Mustang, my daughter's car is still flooded, and the half of my yard, and the people across the street from me, 
they are still full of water. So that is my concern. And I've spoke with the, the gentleman. He came out and looked because we've been having an issue with water stain in our house. Yes. yes. He was awesome. He explained to me and everything. But again, I am very disappointed because I love this district. I mean, this area. I'm not from here. I've been a teacher here for 17 years. Love this place. But as an individual, a mother, a wife, I am done with watching Winnie drain and we sit down there for five or six days afterwards and we've got snakes and we've got sewer and everybody drives by and they're like, sorry, God, that looks horrible. Yeah, it does. It's Somebody tell me right. why you cannot get that water out of there through spin okay. top. I just want an answer. What was your name? Then? Oh, I'm sorry. Penny McCullough. McCullough. I know who you do. It's a nice place. Yes, ma'am. Uh, same thing right there on Main Street, uh, on 106 and Main Street right there by the First Baptist Church in uh, Stoll. Yes, ma'am. Like, that's one, that corner right there, it's like the last place that I drained. Mm -hmm. Like, it stays, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's right. And I mean, we live in a mobile home, and it doesn't, it doesn't flood because it's higher up, but I mean, it still gets human under there because the water stays there for like five days and I mean I have kids and we have to get out of the house so I have them walking in the floodwaters you know the nasty floodwaters because it doesn't drain we feel like all the water stays in that corner and I mean and we also have a property on Hayes Road that we're you know we're planning on building there and uh, I know they have been doing stuff right there I know they have been doing stuff right there on the canal. Yes, ma'am. But I mean, last time it didn't flood so bad right there on Hayes Road. Like this time it flooded, but it didn't flood as bad as last time. It, it is getting better. Well, it got worse this time worse. because it, 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 it got worse. worse. It's it's worse. worse. It's because the water didn't get to some of the people's houses last time, and this time it did. Yeah. So I know, like, you know, like the other guy said, maybe they're, you know, a lot of y'all aren't planning on um, being here in 15, 20 years, but we're just starting. Yeah. Like a lot of us are just starting. A lot of this generation, you know, they have their, you know, their family coming along. And I mean, you kind of think about it, like we've thought about it, you know, we plan on, you know, living here and everything. But right now, since this happened, it's like, do we really want to? And I mean, it's twice, you know, they said it's a 100 year flood or the 500 year flood. <laughs> you, and seem like a, you seem like a nice lady that we need to speak for. Is anyone else? Yeah, Come no, on, you say, you say everybody. Uh, just say, what would you name him? Brenda Vargas. Vargas. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Matt. No, Mike, you, you said everything is improving. Where? It is. Where? We've spent a lot of time here with it's not going down there to Hayes. When he gets 44 inches of rain, you know what we're looking at. It doesn't matter what we're doing. We, we, we're not done yet. We just get started. I don't know. Nice. If you ride during the, during the daytime, right. I don't think you got. You say guys are back there working. Mm -hmm. Well, let me get done, Mike. I mean, it's still the same. Ever since the last time, last meeting we had, it's still the same. You don't see nobody working down there. You see them riding up down the road, though. Yeah. Nobody's working. And right there in front of my house, just 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 good old thunderstorm. Water over the road. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, they don't put no signs out saying water over the road or nothing. I mean, what I plan on doing is building my land where I'm hot and put the water on the road, then y'all be responsible for it. I mean, it's just simple. I don't talk to the county commissioner about it. He know about it. Down way at the end, they had like a four-way night where the water couldn't get out. And it goes in that same that dish that dumps into the Mayhaw. Got trees in there, big as round as me. The city can't clean it out. I mean, it's been going on since, since Harvey. Like I said, I've been fighting water probably since the middle hole. I've asked something and asked and asked about what taking the trees to keep talking about. I've asked Danny, I've asked a lot of people, and uh, they said a lot of them are clean. Okay, I mean, I was, I was here at the last meeting with him, so y'all got some pipe in. Supposed to be needed. Haven't done it yet. Been a week. It don't take that long. I mean, you got people to do the job, but they're not doing the job. Okay, thank you, Matt. Is anyone, yes, sir? Mike? Reagan? Uh, 
Now we're here behind the White House on Main Street. The culverts are full. Why haven't the culverts been cleaned out in over 15, 20 years? Yeah. No. You can look in the culvert and see it's full. Yes. I called Jimmy Gore and said, hey, water's not moving. I go down there and run across him and rabbit a few more talking. Well, that water's not moving. 10 o'clock at night, I go down there with a rake about mm -hmm. five blocks from his house. I pull out wood this big around on the cover. <coughs> he goes, the cover's full here and there's no water here. Exactly. There's a dam backed up. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to get out of the trucks and look. <laughs> oh, that's right. No. Oh, that's right. right. Yes, sir. Did you have any I'd like to speak. Go ahead, sir. All right. Just tell me, Alex. Yeah, yeah. My name is Gene Harrington. I've been uh, a lifelong resident of Chambers County all my adult life. I moved from the west side to Winnie in 94. I built a house on the west end of McBride Street, and we own that house today. And I'm about to illustrate things are not getting better. When I built that house, I tried to be preemptive with it. I built a lot up, and I improved the grade over a foot. So I thought I was going to be high and dry, but as the rainstorms would come and go, the water would come up off of 124 and cover part of McBride Street, maybe a block or so, to near like Kid's house, mm -hmm. and it would recede, and it would up and down, up and down on McBride Street, and sometimes it's worse than others, it get closer and closer to my house. Well, finally, during Harvey, the water literally got to my door sill. I'm telling you another half inch is inside the house, but miraculously, my home did not flood during Harvey. This time, my home flooded. Well, it, it's worse. It, uh, after Harvey, I would have never believed it would happen again. I thought if we somehow got past Harvey, we would never have an issue. But lo and behold, my house flooded this time around. So what I'd like to say today is, flood prevention and mitigation has to be our number one priority before anything else before anything in hand cam or anything else because we're, we're building a stigma here with winning. Winning's known coast to coast now. You see it on CNN and Fox News. Believe me, I was in New Mexico when it happened and I was watching in the hotel lobby 124 market basket. That's what I was seeing on the television. And if, if we flood one more time anything like these past two, we're going to have a stigma just like Bevel Oaks. So I'm begging you, I'm imploring you, Prioritize flood mitigation and flood prevention above anything else. Thank y'all. Thank you. Anyone else? Nobody's ever addressed nothing. They said part of the problem is 
the code was going under an old pay bridge. That's town. The ditch by my house. That is Trinity Bay. Nobody says there does nothing. Right, and that's not right. No, it's not. Thank you very much. My, my goal my, why are we putting projects or putting water lines in somewhere else instead of addressing the drainage? That's my question to the board. Let's get priority for it. Let's get the water down. People in this room have flooded more than one time. Yes. By the grace of God, where we live, I have not flooded. Thank you, Mike. Can I have a question? You've already talked once, but yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. You also gave everybody else an opportunity to talk. And you gave you one earlier, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I just want everybody to know, and I want the board to know. I'm not sure, you know, I don't even know if the attorney there is aware of it, but in September 1st, a bill, uh, Ryan Crusoe, you may want to address it. It has to do with public entities and t open meetings, Texas open meetings, that any citizen, any citizen at any time can address the board on any agenda item at any time. Not only public comment, but be okay. Yes. I just uh, just wanted to make it clear that whenever you know public comment, whenever there's an item here you don't like it, you have the uh, legal right to speak up about it. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Is there any other public comment at this time? If not, we'll move on to item number four and start this meeting. Is there anything else? Well, then right now, we're going on to... Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I'm Hal Lambert. I live in Teacherville. Al, we lost our house twice in Harvey and in Melbourne. Yes. But I want to know why I have a ditch, a utility ditch, in the back of my yard, and there, there's two feet of water in it. Toilets don't flush. Water backs up into my shower. I mean, what's going on? Okay, is there anyone else? At this time, we'll move on to item number four. Consider and approve reappraisal of property damage as a result of the government declared disaster on September 19, 2019 as provided by section 23.02a of the Texas Property Tax Code and prorate taxes as provided by section 2302z. Everybody understands what this is. Uh, is there any discussion? It's a short term relief. It's a short term relief is what it is for me uh, Like uh, uh, Mr. Larson was saying, he got uh, reprieve from taxes and then they came back with a vengeance and raised his taxes. So we have to make sure that we can stay within reason on this. So uh, what I need here is, is a motion. I'm busy giving you the guys something. Uh, I make a motion to approve the reappraisal of the property as per the law. I second the motion. All in favor? All right. Motion has carried. Item number five consider a possible action to authorize LJM Engineering to prepare a watershed study and recommendations to relieve the flooding along Spill Top Bible. And we've had a lot of discussion on that already. I'll make that motion. I'll All in favor? I have some questions. What? Where's your have Hey, all right. All right. <laughs> We're being friendly today. Here we are. Uh, I, I mean, I've listened to all of them. I tell you, there a lot of things that, that, that they bring up. That's a long term fix. But I guess where I have my problem is we've done all these studies that are still within their. Exploration day. Do we need to spend the money on the study right now, or should maybe we look at some short term things first? Amen. I don't know, but I mean, we need short term fences. We, we, we need both. But and we, like I said, Danny can remember. I mean, we did a study in 99, still talk, correct? Won't this include both? 
But then you know that's too old to get funds. It's over three and over eight. You also did it. And they're too old. And out of eight, we still get 20 of plans. Because there is money going to come down from the disaster. We need to be prepared for it. If we are not prepared for it, it will slip by us. And I do not want that to happen. I do not. Alan says, he's like this in July. A lot of money to pay this for data for the Well, I mean, I'm not going to do the real work. Here's a man that can he, he represents LK in, uh, Engineering. He represents Alan Sims in Engineering. He is the Alan Sims Alan, would you like to discuss the divorce here? Can you put your hands to any questions? Yes, sir. Okay, is there any public have any questions for Mr. Sims? Yes. Uh, Dale Arthur needs one. Right. So, yes, he lives here. Yes. So my house did not. Well, two inches from coming in, but yes, I was. I live in Teacherville. I was one of the few houses in Teacherville that did not flood. So, you, have you already done a watershed setup study for Chamber County? We have done a couple over the years. Uh, 2008, 2003. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out, somebody asked me about that earlier. I've been trying to figure out what was 2003, 2008. Uh, I thought there was one. 2003 was a master training plan. And 2008, uh, March of 2008, was a 20 year training plan. You did it. So, <coughs> Bubba made your name on it. Richie made the motion to accept the 03 one, which was titled the master training plan. It's a terrible battle, though, I think. I should have. I mean, looking for that. Well, we did do a 99 study on the 99 Stone study Top. was on Stone Top. I remember that yes. for sure because that was, uh, we were doing Mayhaw Bow and, and Taylor's Bow at the same time. Okay. So I do remember 99 uh, working on stuff because it was a joint effort between 6, 3, and Trinity Bay. Yes. Uh, Okay. I have 2003, question. I'm pretty sure, was Turtle Bow, which, in, which was the study of. Uh, which I believe someone asked earlier about spring branch and spikes uh, cut off and so forth. That was the yeah, handcomer. Yes, it was the handcomer here. Yes, and in 2008, if I'm not mistaken, that is actually the uh, what we call the drainage criteria manual, which was the development guide on how things should be developed within the county. Say drainage. Let's all go on. But it wasn't a complete study. We have. To, we need a complete study. Uh, Okay, the presentation you made in July to us, there was presentation only, no action taken. In a workshop, it was to be the spilled on watershed study by LJ. Okay, that's what it, I mean, okay. And I think in that one, you discussed the fact that we had a lot of conversion that had to be done from the old programs to the new. Yes, there's the uh, software software. But my, my main question, I guess that's what you're presenting tonight, correct? As such? I'm, I'm here to answer any questions. Well, I wonder what we're voting on. Is, is it the same thing that you presented in July? Is that what they're taking a vote on tonight? There are some slight modifications. I was asked to add in the evaluation of 65, 124, and the weir downstream of 124. And where we okay. need to go do some additional evaluation of that because the study we were talking about before was to uh, partial. Well, yeah, we're mainly looking because the, the original study started at the bottom side of I-10 and went down. And Is really this study include the upper part of this, The new I mean, study will include everything, 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 including crossing of I-10 and north up to the okay. county line. And actually will include evaluation of the water coming out of Liberty County as well. Right, because that, I think, is what we're having. Very important. Okay, the same presentation you made was on the Mayo Watershed study. And that was in July, that was three months ago. I'm confused. Why didn't we do a Mayhaw water study before we did the two big ditches? Didn't we have to do it to get the grant? We did the study on Mayhaw. Well, the, the 99 study was the one who that produced the uh, Mayhaw diversion. And but that's saying we're in the middle of doing two Mayhaw ditches right now. And you made a presentation in July to do a study. We didn't do a study before we did the ditches. We're going to do the study to be finished after the ditches. I no, 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 no. The study that we're talking about, the two Mayhaw studies, one is if they just finished the ditch, it comes up next to the school. 
Right. The study is to can we extend that ditch on up to near uh, the arboretum and then come across so we can because the areas we have problems with 124 and then bring two finger ditches okay. up. Will that work and, then, yeah. and what would it cost? Yeah. The question I have for you is did you have a current study? Mm -hmm. 
We got water going over the road for a day and a half after it stopped raining. Mm -hmm. It just couldn't pass through. So if you open up more water north of me, that means I'm going to flood okay. even longer. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think I understand more now because I thought you were talking about the ditch itself. You were talking more about the the tile box. box. Oh, okay. Right. Let me look and see what got put in there because mm -hmm. I know that we. Whenever I put those plants together, it should have been more than double the size of what was there before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. Alan, can I make one comment? Please? Yes, sir. For the last 30 years, we've heard the Corps will not allow us to remove any soil out of the ditch. Yes. Yeah. Where is the Corps? Yeah. Who <laughs> is the Corps? <laughs> <laughs> okay. The Corps is in the, in the in Why the weren't they here? here? That's a good question. Uh, an example, the ditch we dug over there going that you're asking about, if you notice, we didn't touch the bottom. We came up about two feet and then we cut it out wider. The reason we didn't touch the bottom is because the Corps of Engineers said we were not allowed to touch the bottom of that channel. We had to stay above what's called a normal. And it doesn't water. make sense. Normal high, water. It doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make any sense. I can't, exactly. I'm not going to be able to justify it because I don't agree with it. Okay. Why are you going to touch it? Say again, why are you going to touch the bottom of it? Because the Corps of Engineers required a 404 permit, and we went through two years of trying to get that permit, and they finally came back to us and said, the only way you're going to be able to clean this ditch is to get above the ordinary or the high, or high water line, which is, you'll see, if you watch, it's going to be a color change in the grass. When that grass turns dark green, which is usually in the bottom of the channel, from there up, you can dig. From there down, they will not allow it. Unless, you get the permit. We tried for two years. And the money was about to run out, so we we asked the Corps, "How can we dig this without it?" And they they gave us that cross section because this is what you can do. Thank you, Mr. Jim. Now we have a motion. Wait. Check. All right. I'm here. Okay. We got ready to do my yard. Uh, Mr. Gore, what are you trying to say? Um, my name is Ryan Caruso. I was representing Belton's office. Uh, just one quick uh, comment regarding the study. Um, the Texas State Water Development Board has $1.7 billion available in matching funds. We, however, cannot get any funds unless we have this study done. That's right. It's science-based, so they will not let us get any matching funds for anything unless we have this study done. So. Don't they pay for the study? Now, maybe, maybe I should stop these other questions and see how fast you can do this stuff. <laughs> Ma'am? Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. He said you had a question. Time frame was. How fast can you do this study? How fast can you do this study? Yes. The, uh, You're going to be hopping up the money. You're going to be around on the time. Mm -hmm. The time to do the study is going to depend upon the time it takes to get the survey work. And that's going to depend upon access to the sites and so forth. Um, we'll buy you some rubber boots. No problem. <laughs> I got to get Stevie to let me on his property. <laughs> so, <laughs> you understand? Uh, that's, those are the kind of things. I have to get the survey work done. We will probably do 90% of this by LIDAR this time, though. That's one of the things which will make it faster. However, the crossings have to be surveyed by hand because you can't fly those. You have to get down and be able to survey the crossings to evaluate what's there. Um, time frame on this is probably around a six month development, four to six months, something like that. Okay. This is a long term solution. We're going to try to work some short term also. As long as the study is, is underway, can we sort of plan for some of the funds? Um, I don't know the answer to the top of my head. I can find out tomorrow. I think you guys can email. And that was a good question. Okay. Right. Can we go back to the questions I didn't finish? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Or do you have something else? Because I did want to address I'll let you finish that. I'll give you one more. Okay. The, the second main hall study that we talked about in July was the one that's up off of, uh, out by the, uh, Dump, the dump site out here. Yeah. Uh, and that's because the, the property that comes across from like North Lake Estates, the drain comes around and then crosses under I 10. Whenever we found out that I 10 was going to be improved, we went to TechStop to ask to increase the crossing under I 10. 
Uh, we've done that in the past, and that was based upon that 99 study that there should need to be improved crossing underneath IT. Uh, we've been talking to TxDOT off and on for years, and finally they approved, or they agreed to put that crossing under. However, due to uh, objections to that by DV6 and by DV3 in Jefferson County, the agreement was that they would they would build the box culverts underneath ITM, block those culverts off, stop the drainage through those until yeah. we evaluated the downstream impacts and evaluated the crossings and culverts in DV3 to make sure so we could either prove to DV3 there was no problems or re remediate those problems. So. In order to answer those questions to text us so we could open that box, that was the second study. Thanks, sir. Okay, yes, one ma'am. More. I did not I did not vote to approve the main hall laterals and ditch because I could not see the plans. I asked for them two, three times. I came up here and asked for them. I wanted to see what it was going to try. And the anchor fee, who was going to flood because we were diverting water. So this time I'm going to ask you, will you bring me my own set of plans? No problem. Thank you. Now, before we vote, I have another request. Okay. If we're going to do okay. Okay. it's all time to spend on Tom. If you're worried about your agenda. No, not at all. Okay. Uh, we're looking. We're going to, the motion to make the second is to do the long term study so we can start applying for some money. And there's several people that suggested short term. That yes. If we get in a discussion on those, would you look at the engineering pretty quick and see if we're crazy or not crazy or doable? Not because right. I think before we get through this study, you had talked about a major diversion ditch at some point in the July. That's part of the Semi Hall study, yes. I thought it was part of the spell. I mean, you're right. It's part of the spell. Right. Right. I love getting correct an engineer. Yeah. Um, not a problem. I, I, I am not I perfect, and I promise you that. I, I, think, I think, Alan, before you even talk about the money, the permitting, the time to divert spills, I mean, to do a diversion ditch from wherever, 65 or whatever it is, I think we need to go back and look at the suggestion that uh, Mark and George Mitchell made to us about using the reservoir out of the airport for detention. Okay. I think the next thing, and, and Dale and I talked, and Mike came to my house one day with a map. I think Jimmy, you gave him, it looked like a king size sheet when he glued it together. And Jeffrey and I talked through the years about it. He's coming off a spittle top and diverting into uh, Elm, diverting over into East Bay. Um, it's very simple. It's very short. From Spindletop over to Elm is probably not 600 feet at the point you stole where they're the closest. Okay. Your Elm is running right through Edwards Catfish Farm Suite, 360 acres of ditches, I mean ponds, and you have a pump station right in between. It'd be perfect. Um, you can cross right there over. Well, it's a, it's, it's a little longer cross from, from Elm over to East Bay, but then you can take water out three directions. Spindletop, Jeffrey, why don't you go to the map and show the people how close it would be. Spindletop hits, we knew we put that map on the walk for a reason tonight, so no. Spindletop goes way over into Jefferson County and dumps out well. Yes. Why wouldn't the best, uh, Avenue B to come straight down from Stone to hit East Bay by an Elm instead of going miles over into Jefferson County. I am perfectly open to the suggestion. Will you I take will, a I will, engineering look at it? Yes, ma'am. I'll, I'll tell you why I was looking at the other area, and this just came from the discussions back over the last uh, 15, 20 years. After we turned in the, the original spill top study, Cross. there were a couple of issues that I had on the original study that was determined, was not addressed, I guess, and the reason for that had more to do with, you have the weir on the straight part of spill top that goes straight up, and it holds water back for all the farmers that are up. This would be taken off 
This would be taken off by the stone and had it on, in a flood, had it down on, and on down the stable. Now, the, the other day, Dave, you and I were here talking about the discussion yesterday. Uh, the gates on Elm Lee's boat, are those boards going in or are they flat gates? It used to be something that you had to pull the boards out. Yeah, there's boards at the top. Do we... A boat gate. But in these big floods, do we know that the landowners pull those boards? I know. Is there any way for us to know, short of going up there to boat and checking it? Maybe we, Trinity Bay, needs to designate personnel to check those when there's a big flood. Yeah, we get back on track. Jim McCain only here. Okay, well, he's just convinced James back there. But I think there's a, a good list of activities we need to look at. Strong one. Pump, pump, and use that as a conversion pump. Okay, with that, you have a vote. Thank you. Hey, Jeffrey, we're going to go ahead and take a vote on this, please. Can I have, make a comment since it's my legal right to make a comment? <laughs> <laughs> May I make a comment since it's my legal right to comment on an agenda item? Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. I, I would like to ask uh, the original cost was 250000 for the watershed study. Since you're going to be adding on, how much do you think it's going to cost now? Two ninety. Two ninety. Two ninety five. Two hundred ninety five thousand dollars. And then most of that came from checking the surveyors, and that's to go out and do the survey of the weir, which is going to have to be a bad metric, which is much more difficult because it's all underwater survey, mm -hmm. and then 124 and 65 crossings. And then any, and we put in some, for, there's two other small crossings in between. It's primarily looking at those three additional major points in that system. Okay, the, the second part of the question is how are we going to pay for it? Because it wasn't budgeted, obviously. So how are we, yeah. the Trinity Bay, going to pay for a $295,000 study? Okay, part three, and this is this is a good point. Uh, I understand uh, State Representative Mays Middleton told me that the Texas Water Board may pay for the study. That's correct. Yes, and so I would, whoever's making the motion or something, can can amend it saying first, you know, check with the that's, Texas Water Board. That's amazing. Motion was second, Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Something. Sorry. Uh, excuse me? Yes, yes, please. Okay, uh, that's a maybe that mm -hmm. may said, maybe that we would. Yeah. We need to pass this without a maybe. It, we need to do it as a done deal. Okay. We'll find the money. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mike? I'd like to ask the engineer something. Yes. Uh, what other projects does your engineering firm have? What other projects would your engineering firm have? I mean, where are we going to stand on the priority list for getting this done? You said four to six months. Right. I'd much rather see four months than six months. That's my expectation. And that, that, we can all talk about everything that there is, but once we get a timeline, that's where those start. Now they're going to pull the pull the gun, pull the trigger on the gun for you to go. Yes. Where's your firm going to stand on getting this done? What priority is it going to hold for you? Of this? For me, it's a top priority. I, I honestly, I live here, so I understand being a top priority for me. Also. Uh, just so you guys understand, I'll give you a quick bio on our firm. We're a little, just over a thousand employees. We're all in the state of Texas. We're on, our corporate office is in Houston. I work out of the Beaumont office. We got about 60, 55, 60 people in Beaumont right now. About a third of the Beaumont office is under my control. I'm the, I manage the water resources. Also, if you look at the Houston office, we have about 60 people in our water resources department there in the Houston office, and about 20 in Austin and about 20 in Dallas. So I can utilize any of those other resources as I need to to bring this to fruition. To be honest with you, I'm going to have the majority of this modeling portion done out of the Houston office because, perfectly honest, they're faster and cheaper than me. 
the money for And y'all are the best firm for the job. There's no I, I have been doing the drainage in this area for DD6, DD3, DD7, Trinity Bay since 94. So uh, I'm fairly familiar with the region. Uh, I understand that. I will all... follow up. I'll be the one to make sure that it gets done. I understand that. He got to get out. All right. What well, happened with the drainage? Talk to him. He's been doing it for 30 years. I understand, but I know the drill blocks and systems and the way they go. And that's what I'm asking you. Yes, sir. Uh, he answered you, Mike. He's going to do the best he can. Well, but he may need some help, is what I'm after. If, if he does need some help, what does he need? We've had over 200 families that have come here over these last two meetings. Yes. And it's probably tripled that. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so. I know you're you're doing the best you can. I don't doubt that a bit. But if you need some help, we need to know what it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mike. That's all. My, that's my only point, Mike. Okay. Right. And then, so we have a motion and a second. What, what can I ask about what what's the thoughts on the short term after you get the study done, or when you do the study? What's the thoughts on the short term? The uh, best thing we can do on short term, to be honest with you, you know, what I've done in the past is when we know there's an issue. Somebody needs to identify it, call me, but get me to go look at it. Uh, honestly, I haven't been doing that for you guys for a few years because it's not been what I've been asked to do lately. Um, you know, back in the, I'd say the early 2000s and mid-2000s you know, to 2010 or so, that I came over here on a fairly regular basis, and every time I came over, somebody said, hey, we got this issue, and I'd go look at that. But uh, a few years ago, I was pretty much... Uh, that I was told we were charging too much, we were doing too much over here, and was asked to uh, back off on that time. So that's what we've done. I only come when I ask. Who told you that? Who told you to back off? The board? No, ma'am. <laughs> so, like, so, 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 and why not at the Harvey? Damn, there's a problem, wasn't it? Yeah. Harvey was a problem. Actually, and I've, uh, I've looked at quite a few things over the years, and I have... No, I'm talking about after Harvey. After Harvey? We were completing the projects that were under uh, contract at that time. And, uh, so the flooding of people is not important. We've got to go through the I read a comment that smelled off was clean uh, after Harvey. Where at? Well, you we've been cleaning the trees, doing some slash up and stuff. Quite a bit in there, too. Okay. Yeah. I hadn't seen it. I hadn't seen yeah. it. Yeah, are you not looking? No. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. right. we, we have a motion and a second. We're going to take a vote on okay. this item. Right. That's part number five. Yes. What I'd like to do is, I need to go out when you identify places. Let me go look at it. I mean, very similar. You know, back on Fig Ridge, back I want to say about ten years ago, there was a set. I think not, not only ten years ago, but right that time you took office, we went and rode down and looked at the issues of the small writing event. And I was asked, come look at this. We rode down to Fig Ridge Road and identified some issues and some things we could do in a short term basis. And I believe you, you took care of those at the time. And then, uh, you know, similar situation. It's one of those things where I got to be notified that there's a problem. I need to be, you know, take me out there and look at it. Because you know, sitting here, I just, I can't just give you the answers until you show me what's going on. Because I have to evaluate the situation. Uh, I, you know, honestly, I didn't. The, the comment about the culverts being too small caught me completely off guard because that is not what I understood we put in. So I need to find out what I think to look at it, okay? You have a business, sir? Yes, Mr. Clark. Because evidently we're not being heard by our general manager. He's not passing on the information like it should be. I have them in my truck. I'll go get them. They're not? Sir? Yes. Okay, you're at Harvard. Yes, sir. Road, Todd Road. You know when you're going east in the Jefferson County? Yes. The Escar. Harvard. I was interested in the buggy. I think you're going to the buggy. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir
This time, you couldn't even get close to the curve down where Joe Cruz lived. Yeah. You could not. I mean, the water stopped right there at Hayes Street. Okay. Hurricane Carla, the water stopped. <clears throat> south, south Street Bridge Road. We never had any water. None. Okay. You're okay. from old boy hike. I made a mess. Mm -hmm. Everything that's from Ike is in them ditches everywhere. Yes. Yes. That's east wind because you got 18 foot water water come across in this. It was cabbage. From down in 1985, we <coughs> We chased cattle for six months. Okay. These keep getting worse. It's just part of it. You can't drain water like a pond. I mean, that's what you're doing. You got to store it south and work north. Jefferson County, DD6, and DD3 did. Why can't we? That's my question. Thanks, Mike. And uh, just so you understand, the DD3 and DD6 diversions were my brainchild. I brought that up. I developed that for them. I, got, I, I didn't finish the design and actually get it implemented, but the conceptualization, conceptualization of that process, I started that in 94 with them. And then I stopped working with DD6 in 2001, but, and then they finished that project after. But it was in the process of being permitted by the Corps. Just so you understand, we started permitting on the Corps in 2000, or 1999 on the ditch, and it got permitted in 2012. Wow. Just, I just want you all to understand that you know, we, we fought through that. And, and the problem we, I have with that ditch that's over there is that there is a weir on the upstream side so that it maintains the one-year flood south swim top that, that relieves that area. That's the same thing we're talking about doing is do another dish like that. The problem there is it comes in north of the the, the weir on the swim top. And I'd like to get it below that. You have a lot of good ideas. Yeah. There's a lot of good ideas going around. Well, and I think a lot of this is going to work. But yeah. we have to get started with this water state. Yes. I, have, well, I have a nomination. I have a second. We need yeah. to take a vote. Jeremy keeps trying to talk. Would you please let him talk? I mean, we folks have discussions too. You know, at, at, why can't one, some of the board go down and show him those temporary reliefs we have? Temporary I mean, relief. with motion, we folks have discussions on what we're talking about. And that's what we're doing. <coughs> what I know, you, you were going on and going to push a long term study. I'm, I'm more, part of that. We're going we're gonna to do right. it. I, I just want to add temporary, temporary reliefs you huh? talking about. I just want to finish the motion. The motion's been made and seconded. The discussion. Right. I just want to finish it, Jeffrey. Then we can discuss some more. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes. All right. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Motion has carried. Moving on to item number six. Well, we're we're done talk some more, Jeffrey. Thank you. About, about this? Yes, exactly. Moving on to item number six. Richie is not here. Rick Neely talked for Richie some. Mr. Neely, did you have anything else to say about this drainage? No, I, I really didn't. Uh, I wasn't prepared. I talked a little bit to Richie about it. Yes, sir. Uh, but we really didn't have an opportunity before he had to go out of town and sit down and actually go into his issues. Yes. So, you uh, might want to keep that on your next agenda. Okay. If you would make that another agenda for the next meeting. Right. Now, at this time, we have passed that, and we're not going to deal with item number six. Uh, we would probably postpone it or move it off to the next meeting. But uh, is there any more questions for Mr. Sims? Please. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> if I could just go uh, and I appreciate the, the study, and, and I do believe that needs to be done. Oh, yes. Uh, absolutely for my son and his kids and all that that's got to be done for the future of this community right. but, but I have to still go back to the short-term solutions and, and those and, and, and what everybody's talking about in here guys and, and y'all know that as well as I do that's maintenance issues yes yeah, those are maintenance things that's those are things that are going on right. all the time right. and I've known that man right there all my life He's worked here just about all his life. Dang. He knows. He knows what to do. Yes. And I understand Corps of Engineer permits and everything. You know, uh, when I was working for this district, when we hired out, but we shouldn't have to go to an engineer.
to take care of maintenance items. No, sir. And every machine we have is working. It is. Well, I understand the county is going to try to assist us on that with, with some more equipment and all so and we can get in. Mr. Gibson, you know you were managing this place at one time. Absolutely. And you know that these long-term projects have to be dealt with. Day-to-day -day maintenance, we have every machine working we can. We're listening to ideas. Y'all brought some good points tonight. Some more problems we need to look at. And uh, Danny will be checking into it. Mike, David, Jerry, everybody will be looking into this. So that we can get some more things done. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Go ahead, Tom. James, did y'all do any of these studies when you worked here? I don't recall doing any uh, major studies like this on any of the watersheds when I worked with Trinity. Right. It, it's been put off a long time. It needs to be put But we, were, we also had a different kind of maintenance program that you could do back then. We had drag lines, we had, you know, and we were cleaning these ditches out. Uh, your hands aren't as tied as some of these are. Now. But yes, Representative yeah. Middleton has yeah. said that the new core guy is going to make this easier. Let's it looks good. Him. It looks really good. Let's get to him and, and find out now. Let, let's don't wait six months for a permit. Mike, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, there's Mr. Gold here. The county on the other side of the river doesn't have any drainage district. Is that correct? That's correct. Not that I know of. And they have problems. Did they pay any taxes to Trinity Bay? No. Yeah. And they right. have problems. Too. And who does their drainage? The county attempts to do that. Okay, now why doesn't the county attempt to help us over here? Yes, they did. They, they have. They've offered. Uh, they're talking about the commissioner's court right now. Yes, sir. About buying a machine, setting up another slash post, and coming with money. They're talking about buying easements that interfere with our working. They're talking about a lot of things, Stevie, that might happen, and this is going to be good. This had to be two floods before they. I, that's terrible. Woke up. It's terrible to think that way, but maybe we can get something good out of something. That's exactly. But you know, our tax dollars have been uh, running, running, paying this building, and buying equipment, paying labor, and all that. And right. our tax dollars also paid a drain, Mont Bellevue. But we need to have focus. So that's we need not, to know that, no, that's not quite fair. I know. <clears throat> that's not I'm quite saying. fair. I know. Okay, Stevie, it gets something. Ninety-two percent of the tax dollars period come from my building. Yeah, they are the biggest. I mean, thing. yes, we're all paying the same tax. The no money. No, no, no. no the from the the county. Countywide, a huge percentage. Ninety. What is it, Jimmy? Seventy-one percent. Seventy-one percent. Seventy-one percent. Come to your refineries over there. No, no, no. But I'm saying everybody's it, dollar should count. It does. It does yeah. matter. And I, I'd be a positive, not negative. Well, my property isn't quite as valuable as my Bellevue property. Well, but it's mine. But it, it is. Yes, it is. But it needs to have that up there. If it is under tax, water. My tax dollar ought to be able to help me. They yes. keep our taxes. And not, and not take my county tax dollar over there to drain their ditch. Well, we'll if, they, if they chose to pay Trinity Bay's rate, how much more money would Trinity Bay have? What? If they chose to pay Trinity Bay's rate on their property, how many more well, dollars would Trinity both, Bay? 70% more. You were 70% more. The West Side voted not to be allowed to Trinity Bay in 49. And they, then they come back and talk to us about being something. So I don't know what's going on. Yes, sir. Mr. Well, I, I got a simple question. And I'd just like to know, is the board willing to go on record and say that flood mitigation and prevention will be our utmost priority until this thing is solved? I know, that, I know Thank that. you. And I will do that. Too. I promise you. Are you all on? On board to, to go on record and say and, and this is the number one priority. I'm going to tell you something, Mr. Harrington, too. We've never stopped, but there is things that need to be done that haven't been done. In Handcomer, I know there were ditches that hadn't been cleaned in 15 years, and we got to them in the last couple of years. I don't dispute any of that because I keep pushing and pushing and pushing. I'm trying to every dollar that we had in this organization, I would gladly spend it. For the people, because it's their money. It's not our money, it's y'all's money. We need to speak it for y'all. 
Yes, sir. I'm aware there's a number of issues. I did. I, I feel for you on that. I know this is a big knot that has to be unraveled. There's no simple, quick solution. But I just simply want to know, are you willing to go on record and say this is our number one priority of flood mitigation and prevention until we essentially get this thing solved? Yes, sir. Stop yes, yes or no? It is our yeah. number yeah. one priority. Thank you. Is that? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. And we do care about y'all. No matter yeah. what the paper says, we do care about y'all. Prove it. Prove it. We want to come in here. Yeah. Yeah. Who got your water <coughs> off your eyes? You did. And what did I tell you about the, that the county didn't want to come change that code? Well, you, you should have brought that dynamite out and dynamite <laughs> Interstate 10 for me, brother. But what was nice is who worked with us and we changed some pipes and did some things. Everybody contributed, LNBA, Chamber really County, and TBCD. We got it done and your rice crop was saved. Am I it right? Was. It was. Mike, did you have a question again? I, I would like to, to know, or maybe I missed it, but that y'all are give the engineering firms short-term input into what it is that we need to be doing, not just yes. the long-term contract. Yes, sir. There's a lot of things like that we know needs to be done. That we don't need an engineering plan. We don't have to pay for plans and different things. There's some long-term things that we need to do. So everything has its priority. Well, I guess what I'm, I'm asking, Mike, it sounds like the relationship with the engineering firm changed back in 2010. From what I heard you say. Okay. They didn't want to spend the money. I understand, but Mike, it's going to be a problem. If you have to spend the money. We just don't want to do something to right. do something, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Right. And, and, and I know we're trying to do the right thing. I am. And I know Danny knows what to do in a lot of these issues. But if he needs engineering help, what I'm asking the board to do is to make sure that he gets that without having to go through a board meeting a month later to get it done. Exactly. Okay. That's all I'm asking is that if y'all could do that tonight, tell him that Dan will get the support he needs in order to do what all the answer answer your question. You know, it's a day-to-day -day thing with Danny and other people. That other people call and have problems. They answer these problems. We move the machines around all over Chamber County. <coughs> everywhere. And we tend to these problems every day, every day, every day. Okay. And there's a lot of ditches, a lot of problems here. We need more equipment, more people. More everything. I understand, but I, I'm just, what I'd like to know is to make sure that we're working on the right thing and oh, yeah. the right priority. If right. Danny, Danny or uh, right. Jerry needs it, they shouldn't have to come back to the board to ask permission to right. get engineered. That's right. We need to have focus. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We need to make sure our money's spent in the right way. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dan, you know where it's at? We've got on the spindle top, um, we have uh, a, a long reach and a, and a short reach. The long reach, we had a new attachment put on it. We had a problem with it. So we moved the short, the short reach to go do what he, what he can and a dozer. So right now, we're, we're working on the spindle top from Dugall Road going towards 65. Where is the equipment at? Where is the equipment at? Because I looked on your website for projects that were done in 2019, it looks like a lot of them were on private properties. Are is equipment still being used on private properties right now? No. While well, people's drains are not being improved. Well, we have I'm to where this. all the equipment's at, right? Okay. I'm going to answer that if I can. It's not for private property. We only do it if other people drain through property. Then we clean those ditches. In other words, if it benefits more than one person. We don't do private property drainage. Mike, let me explain to you. Yeah, well, I just wanted you to understand. Our easements go through property. Right. When you say it's a Joe Bluff's property, they're following that bank where we have easements. Correct. But we have to, I mean, it's through every, almost every ditch we have is through the middle of someone's property. We have ingress it, Yeah, it may be 10 pieces of property to get from the beginning to end. Right. But it sounds, when you're looking on the reports, like it's private property, but it's our easement through it. Right. And then we'll move off the ammo to somebody else. Right. I'm following the ditch on the lawn. But that's how that proceeds and works. Did that answer your question, man? Okay. Is there any other thing? It's time for prayer. 
Uh, Hello, William. Or yeah. Jerry? Yeah, Steve. Uh, it, I met with Textile and these people up north of I 10. This is what Textile is looking at doing as a solution to, to stop your flood. I met with them two weeks ago uh, with every drainage district from Orange all the way across. And this is some of the solutions that we've come up with to, to fix the drainage on, uh, on I 10. I want to I want to put this on record that I asked our county judge yes. eight months ago to do something like this on uh, three different places yes, in case they had an emergency. I called him six o'clock the morning before my house flooded and asked him if, if I could get permission to open, not to where it would flood anybody, on the west side of Rush Ditch right. yeah. to let the water south. And, uh, you know, I was told by TxDOT that he had the authority to do that, and he chose not to. Okay. Our that that would have helped the road. That would have helped a lot. That of would help. That would help everything north. north. You don't think so? That would have helped everything north. I gave you the timelines of when we flooded at my end of the yeah. Billy Road. Yes. Lady started getting water at 1030 in the morning, at 1030 at night. I started getting water. I was ankle deep at 1230 at night. I was waist deep at 7 in the morning, Richie, or 7.30 in the morning, Richie DeVillier, a mile west of me, just started getting water into his house. Right. And Spindletop, and this area you're talking about, is further west. In fact, I flooded. This will not help DeVillier no. Road no. my end. But I know that Jerry and I visited about a diversion ditch around the, the water plant and some other things that might help your area. Because we visited about that. We've been talking about that the very same thing. Okay, that's, that's good. I didn't know that, but this will right. not help. There's a lot of things that we've seen, and a lot of problems y'all bring here. Well, listen, I got a list right here. The problems that you brought tonight that we can check into and find out what's going on, what we can do about it. And that's what I intend to do. It may not get fixed tomorrow. But it's on the list and it will be <coughs> we'll get looked at. Yes, sir. Hey Mike, I want to bring up to the board. I think y'all need to revisit this two dollar tax rise that y'all did on taxes. And I think y'all need to do and all right, Gloria's curtail. Well that was that was just on the I, water. I know. No, but I'm gonna ride on her curtail right now. On the west side, yes, when Andrew Brothers came in, they made mud, mud in one district. They built their septic system or their sewer plant. Once the debt was paid off, the city of Baytown took it over. I think the board needs to do that to handcuff him because this man is coming in building, can care less about Chambers County. He ain't from Chambers County. He's over here making millions of dollars, but yet we're fixing to have to pay for his sewer plant, which all the other subdivisions he's all the other subdivisions he's built, he's made mud districts, they paid the debt off, and then the city of Baytown or whoever has taken over those sewer plants. And I was gonna tell you that was visited about in this very room. But what it is, we have some other issues along with some of our other that we need. We have other sewer like from Oak Island, Double Bile, and different things that we might can ship to this plant and help with T C Q we also have a vacancy in the way we But we're gonna get overloaded pretty quick and we haven't been fine yet. The T C Q will start fine. And that's a waste of money, total waste of money. Well, we don't feel it, we don't have to send us the bill for it. And they're going to make us do this. Well, it's at the capacity now without the subject. Right. It's not okay, but and, and we're not using our capacity in it. Why don't we use that? How much are we using there, Mike? 30%. No, it's more. 30%. Wow. Right, Lenny? Lenny? What about using the other 97% instead of helping somebody that doesn't even live in our county? that's coming in here, he hasn't even sold a lot yes. in his so-called subdivision. It's not just for him. Man. If you've got 97% empty at the Anahuac sewer plant, and that's, not, not, that's not correct, man. Okay, well correct it then. Tell me the correct numbers. Well, we're currently using all of our capacity basically at the, uh, at the Anahuac plant as well. Uh, we'll know more. They're, they're putting in meters. We'll know more once they get those in being the city of Anahuac itself. But at this time, as far as what we know, our, our calculations are we're, we're about maxed out at the Anahuac sewer plant. Okay. Well, why don't you add on to Anahuac? 
why don't you add on down to Double Bayou and, and Oak Island? Help the people that are Chambers County people that have been here. Help us, the, the natives yeah. that have paid for this county. Okay? And not help somebody that's coming in just to get wealthy off of us. Mm -hmm. That's what y'all are doing. Well, some of the property has already been sold like several years ago that they're building houses on now. Mm -hmm. And the property owner of them was somebody from right here in Wink. That's, that's and did he come make this issue? Which he's yes. not only here, but he's not tonight. But, okay. I mean, this is for already existing uh, homes. That, that the sewer, the sewer plant is just not for the subdivision. That's a misnomer. What about, what about Handcomer? That's a, that's a good question about Handcomer. They need the room, too. We don't have sewer. We're on septic. They're all on septic tanks. And they pay. One of them is, we were all here, we have it on camera, it's live on Facebook, a couple people that the board said that their number one priority was going to be flood mitigation and taking care of these immediate things. Well, what everybody here needs to know is that half of the people who work for Trinity Bay, the workers, they're working on county projects, the Smith Point Waterline. They're working on the Smith Point Waterline, which should have been contracted out to, you know, Winnie Welding or something. But Trinity Bay is doing it. So half the guys exactly. working. That was a GLO project. You know what? Yes, for the county. And, and for the county. And I'm not mistaken because yes, it was brought no, I'm not. It was brought up commissioner's court and they asked if Trinity Bay was charging cost or what they were charging. And the response was to the judge that Trinity Bay was charging the county cost for equipment, materials, labor, fuel, whatever. So that's what half of the Trinity Bay workers are doing. They're doing a county project. So first of all, Trinity Bay needs to quit contracting out because you're not a contractor. You're supposed to be cleaning ditches. The second thing I would like to talk to you about is about a year and a half ago, when we were talking about the Mayhall lateral, Mayhall Bayou, I stood up here and I said, and I, it was Cody who was the engineer, I said, the plan that you were doing with starting up here, I said, you're going to flood the heck out of Stowell. And that's exactly what happened. Exactly. And he told me, he said, no, ma'am, we're not going to flood Stowell. That's exactly what happened. So don't you start from the bottom and clean up? Need a motion. Uh, I did, I like motion to adjourn and second. All in favor? Uh, <laughs> motion is adjourned. Thank you all for coming. Thank you very much. stunned when you said you didn't know about these issues. Nobody told you anything about what's going on in store? Nobody told you. And, and I see, you know, like you come here and you're going, how would you know if nobody tells you? So nobody, so no one from Trinity Bay told you that people were calling in with issues? Huh? Had not heard about it. You had not heard about it until tonight. Okay. Thank you. And I appreciate your honesty. All right.